When we gaze up at the night sky, filled with its countless stars and galaxies, it is only natural to wonder about our place in it all. We often feel a sense of purpose, a feeling that our existence was somehow written into the cosmic blueprint from the very beginning. Yet when we delve into the deep history of our own planet, a vastly different and perhaps more astonishing story emerges. It is a story not of inevitability, but of sheer breathtaking chance. The journey that led to you and me, to our cities, our art, and our questions about the universe, is a chain of improbable events. So many things could have unfolded differently, and we would not be here at all, not as individuals, and certainly not as a species. To truly grasp the miracle of our existence, we must first appreciate how utterly unremarkable Earth's life was for most of its history. If you could have visited our planet for its first four billion years, you would have found a world dominated by the very small. For the vast majority of its existence, life on Earth was microbial. Tiny single-celled organisms swirled in the oceans, quietly transforming the atmosphere. There were no trees, no fish, no insects, and certainly no creatures pondering their own existence. Think of it this way, for nearly 90% of life's history on Earth, there was nothing you could see without a microscope. The world of redwood trees, giraffes, and thinking apes is an exception, a beautiful and rare flowering of complexity. The history of life on Earth is punctuated by dramatic upheavals, moments of immense crisis that we call mass extinctions. Over the last half billion years, there have been five such catastrophic events where a vast majority of species are wiped out. They are the moments when the evolutionary game is reset and the rules are rewritten. The winners and losers are determined not by strength, but by luck. These mass extinctions are often triggered by rapid and extreme environmental change. We know the causes of two of them with certainty. The first, at the end of the Permian period some 250 million years ago, was caused by colossal volcanic eruptions in what is now Siberia. The result was the Great Dying, an event that wiped out over 90% of all marine species. It was the closest life ever came to complete extinction. Imagine the world 66 million years ago at the very end of the Cretaceous period. For over 150 million years, it was a planet ruled by dinosaurs, a vibrant ecosystem teeming with life. Vast forests covered the continents, and warm seas were home to colossal marine reptiles. This was a world of giants, from the apex predator Tyrannosaurus rex to immense herds of Triceratops. They were the undisputed rulers of land, sea, and air. Alongside them, our mammalian ancestors scurried in the shadows, ecologically insignificant, simply trying to survive in a world not built for them. Then, on a day that began like any other, the sky fell. Hurtling from the asteroid belt, a rock six miles wide entered the atmosphere. It came screaming towards the surface at 50,000 miles per hour, an unstoppable cosmic projectile. It slammed into the planet in what is now the Yucatan Peninsula, striking with the force of billions of atomic bombs. The impact was an event of almost unimaginable violence, instantly vaporizing rock and water and carving a crater over 100 miles across. The immediate aftermath was a global inferno. As superheated material from the crater was blasted into space, it rained back down across the globe. It was like trillions of red-hot meteors streaking through the sky, igniting continent-spanning wildfires. The atmosphere heated to the temperature of a baking oven, cooking any creature not sheltered underground or underwater. Then came the cold and the dark. The sky turned black with soot from the fires and sulfur from the vaporized rock, blocking out the sun for decades. This plunged the Earth into a prolonged impact winter, shutting down photosynthesis across the planet. The ecological collapse was swift. With photosynthesis halted, the planet's plant life withered. With their food supply gone, the largest creatures were the first to perish. The great dinosaurs, the mighty mosasaurs in the seas, and the pterosaurs in the skies all vanished forever. The intricate food web, built over millions of years, unraveled in a geological instant. On land, no animal larger than about 25 kilograms survived. 75% of all species were erased. It was a complete reset for life on Earth, wiping the slate clean for the survivors. In the grim aftermath, there were survivors. The creatures that made it through were not the biggest or strongest, but the small, the adaptable, and the lucky. In a barren world, a smaller body required less food and could reproduce more quickly, a key advantage. Survival also meant finding sanctuary. Things that could burrow underground were shielded from the initial heat blast and the freezing impact winter that followed. 
semi-aquatic creatures like crocodiles found refuge in the water, which buffered against the most extreme temperature swings, creating stable pockets where life could endure. With the dinosaurs gone, a vast ecological space was suddenly vacant. For 150 million years they had dominated every major niche, and now those roles were empty. The world was an open stage, waiting for new actors. The mammals, which had been waiting in the wings for 100 million years, seized the opportunity. Previously small nocturnal creatures living in the shadows of giants, they were now free to step into the light. The age of reptiles was over, the age of mammals was about to begin. The fossil record tells this story with remarkable clarity. In a discovery near Colorado Springs, fossils document the first million years after the impact. This site provides a continuous, layer-by-layer -layer record of recovery, a complete snapshot of an ecosystem reborn. We see mammals rapidly growing larger than they had ever been. Within just a few hundred thousand years, rat-sized survivors evolved into raccoon-sized creatures and then larger still. This was evolution in overdrive, setting the stage for the incredible diversity we see today, from bats to whales. It's a humbling thought. Without that asteroid, mammals would have remained minor players. The age of reptiles would have continued and our primate lineage would never have evolved. Our very existence is a direct consequence of that ancient cosmic catastrophe. So when you look at a dog, a cat, or yourself in the mirror, you are looking at a descendant of the ultimate survivors. Our world was built from the ashes of theirs, a testament to resilience, adaptation, and the profound role of chance in the story of life. The first accident was sudden and violent, the second was much slower, driven by immense forces deep within our planet, the collision of two continents. The Indian subcontinent was once an island far south of the equator, part of a tectonic plate zipping northward faster than other plates. Around 40 to 50 million years ago, this relentless northward march culminated in a monumental crash. The Indian plate slammed into Asia, the immense pressure buckled and folded the Earth's crust, creating the most spectacular mountain range on the planet, the Himalayas. This exposed enormous amounts of new rock to the atmosphere. When rock weathers, it draws carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Over millions of years, this massive mountain range acted like a giant sponge, slowly scrubbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and cooling the planet. For millions of years after the dinosaur extinction, Earth was very warm, with lush forests stretching from pole to pole. But the slow, steady work of the Himalayas was changing everything. As carbon dioxide levels dropped, the planet began to cool. About two and a half million years ago, global temperatures had dropped low enough to tip Earth into an ice age. This period has been characterized by dramatic oscillations, with massive glaciers advancing and retreating in cycles lasting tens of thousands of years. In East Africa, these climatic swings meant lush forests would give way to open savannas, creating immense pressure on species living there. This constant environmental instability became the engine of evolution. Species had to adapt or face extinction. It was within this crucible of climatic chaos that the story of our lineage, the hominids, truly took shape. As Africa's climate changed, forests gave way to open savannas. This new world presented a stark choice, adapt or perish. This environmental pressure cooker became the engine of our evolution, favoring those who could think on their feet. The most remarkable transformation was the dramatic expansion of the hominid brain. Over a million and a half years, it tripled in size, a high-stakes evolutionary gamble. A larger brain is metabolically expensive, but it paid for itself by enabling superior problem-solving and a more complex social life. This bigger brain was accompanied by behavioral complexity. Our ancestors started making stone tools, evolving from simple choppers to finely crafted hand axes. These weren't just rocks. They were ideas made manifest, allowing them to butcher animals and access nutrient-rich marrow, the very fuel needed for a hungry brain. They discovered and learned to control fire, a revolutionary technology providing warmth and protection. But its greatest impact was on our diet. Cooking unlocked a treasure trove of calories, and the campfire became our first social hub, extending the day for storytelling and strengthening community bonds. We were becoming a technological ape able to adapt not just through biology, but through culture and innovation. Knowledge could now be passed down through generations, creating a cumulative culture that accelerated our development far beyond the slow pace of genetic change. It is a stunning chain of causation, stretching from the movement of tectonic plates to the very thoughts inside our heads today. 
That single geological event altered weather patterns, created the savanna, and ultimately sparked the evolution of the consciousness that allows us to comprehend this story. The story of our existence is a miracle, a tale of two grand collisions that altered the course of life. We are the descendants of survivors, beneficiaries of cosmic and geological luck. To be alive today, to understand this incredible story is a privilege of unimaginable proportions, for we are the universe made conscious.